It's spring of 2018 here on the campus of California State University, Channel Islands, here at the former Camarillo Regional Park, or Cam Park, now we call it University Park. It's a riparian corridor area. Five years ago, on the morning of May 2nd, just before 7 a.m., a spark or a cigarette, something was, was thrown out or, or fell out of a car on the Conejo grade on the 101 freeway. And the incredible Santa Ana winds that were going on at the time helped drive that fire all the way here to campus. So by 10 a.m., campus was evacuated and the campus was burning. Our, our lands were on fire. Incredible work of firefighters both locally and from across the state through a mutual aid program in the state of California really helped save our campus, the physical infrastructure of our campus, our surrounding areas, our landscapes burned, but the buildings were by and large saved. And then, and then as the fire went and hit the ocean, hit the ocean down near Point Magoo, went inland and then came back up, the community of Dos Vientos was threatened. That was also saved due to another Herculean effort of the firefighting community. On our campus here, we have some unique insights. So it just so happened I was teaching a field methods class that year and we've been out here monitoring stuff. So we've been monitoring a condition very similar to what it looks like now in the days and weeks before the fire. And the fire came in and we went, we jumped on it right after the, the fire crews had left. We began monitoring what was going on. So obviously the first thing that happened right here in the former Camarillo Park area, what we now call it University Park, um, was the vegetation was all burned. This was completely denuded. This was all naked. This was just charred stumps, uh, no grass left, etc. It was a, a very complete burn. The wildlife was mostly, the larger wildlife that could move left the hills from up there and ran out into the agricultural fields of the Oxnard Plain over here and or the riparian corridor such as Cayugas Creek right here. Much of the riparian vegetation was, was burned but only on the edges so the core middle part of the creek um, those plants generally survived okay, and we had a, a few spot fires, a few buildings caught fire um, out in the agricultural areas, but primarily um, the fire was restricted to this side of Cayugas Creek. The big animals ran down, the big animals ran out into the fields and into the, the streams and creeks. The smaller critters died, so we had a huge number of particularly small-bodied critters, rabbits, squirrels, rodents, snakes, and the like very high mortality. After the fire, we saw a huge concentration of wildlife right here, right along this levee, right along the, vegeta the remaining vegetated riparian corridor, the immediate riparian corridor. Very little. As we went away from, as we went away from the, the creek, the abundance of wildlife declined precipitously. That pattern was maintained for several months and indeed for about a year or so afterwards, but as the vegetation began to recover, we saw the recovery of a lot of our um, animal populations. The smaller critters, the smaller bodied critters, took the longest to recover, but they now appear to, five years on, be, be similar to what they were before. The plant diversity is similar to what it was before here in the floodplain. However, the absolute biomass is not quite what it was before. The vegetative height, so how tall these shrubs are, these coyote bush, this baccarus, this, all of these different uh, woody and herbaceous plants, are generally um, back to what it was. So, so this is about as high as our monitoring transect showed the vegetation was before the fire. The difference is we don't quite have as much stuff. So here, if we look at this particular uh, uh, shrub right here, we have some great stems, we have some great leaves, but it's not quite as thick and tufty and, and as much biomass as we saw before. So the biomass is, is very similar, but not exactly the same. It's a different story on our hillsides up here. So our hillsides have been particularly stressed in the recent drought. So only last year did we get significant rainfall. This water year, which we're just ending, this, this rainy season, we're just ending, um, so the rainy season from the fall of 2017 to the, to the uh, early spring of 2018, um, we had a, a, a okay amount of rain. Not a huge amount, but an okay amount of rain. Last year and this year have allowed the hillsides to start to green up. For the past several years, they were very brown, very denuded still. So the recovery of the biomass of the plants 
and insects and everybody associated with these communities on the hillsides have not recovered five years on, or at least, or at least not equivalent to what we had before uh, the 2013 fire. We do have particular things that also have been severely stressed and lost, such as Dudley of Viridii, one of our um, very, very um, close to going extinct plants. Um, that has fared very poorly in the, drought, in, in the drought that came in the wake of the fire. So we have some things that, have, that are doing just fine, other things that are still stressed. By and large, this system is still recovering. The casual visitor, though, would come down and walk on our trails, and they wouldn't see a huge difference between before and now. So fire is a natural part of our ecosystems here in coastal California and our Mediterranean ecosystem, so it's a natural thing to have fires every now and then. The issue we have to worry about is in this era of climate change, what is changing with the things other than fire? What is changing with the frequency with which fire is brought to the system? What is changing with the time of year in which these fires go? And importantly, what's the, what's the recovery regime like after a fire? So are we having adequate amounts of rainfall precipitation to allow the plants and critters to recover in the wake of a destructive impact such as a wildfire? We're still figuring these things out, we're still looking, but at least so far here, five years on after the Springs fire, um, things are looking uh, fairly good here in the floodplain. Come on out, check out University Park. Anybody can come here and, and, and park and, and have a wonderful hike. You need only pay for parking, which is six bucks, but on that you can have a wonderful walk and you yourself can explore what's happened five years on from the 2013 Camarillo Springs fire. <laughs>